What's up everybody, Peter McKinney here. Welcome back to yet another video. This is the quintessential, this is my quintessential 2024 filming rig. This is seven years of YouTube knowledge put into what I find is the pinnacle, the best frictionless setup to record videos in a moment's notice. This video is sponsored by Canon. How I make videos in 2024, my setup after seven years of making setups in my closet to my spare bedroom, to my shared office, to my big compound, to this studio, and what I've done to eliminate all friction from making videos. So that's the key word here, friction. My sister said to me once, Pete, you gotta land some planes. I was like, huh? And she was like, you know, all these different tasks that you have, you procrastinate like I do. And let's look at those as if they're airplanes circling the airport, waiting for clearance to land. You can only have so many in the sky. If I get the idea, I gotta sit down and I gotta hit record right away. So you saw the studio tour. The middle of the studio I kept open because I wanted to eventually put a table in there. So let me run you through all the gear, all the lights, all the mics, all the things. Super packed cage setup in the middle of my studio. Table, that's out of the way. Number two, C-stands. I've got these Avenger C-stands that I've been using for years. I got them from BH, they are super heavy. I've got sandbags on each of them, like three on each one, because there's so much mounted to these that if one went over, it would be an absolute disaster. Sandbag your stuff. Now on the top of each C-stand, I have one of the boom arms extended all the way across that connects to each stand. And that lets us mount the lights, the mic, the top-down camera, all of that with Manfrotto friction arms, all the cables, and all of that feeds into one extension, which is just one braided cable, braided, braided fabric cable, because that's cooler. Third thing is the light. We're using an F22X flat square LED panel from Amaran. Now, I've been using the Light Dome 2 since I, I was brought into this world, it seems. Okay, that Light Dome 2, I am no stranger to that thing, but let's be honest, that is like, it's so big, people could play tennis inside it. It's a tennis dome. It's huge. Massive. We've got a grid on that panel. Have it nice and close. The depth of it is so, so... Whoa, when's it coming? When's it coming? Where is it? Uh. It's a big project. What is that, four and a half inches? Four and a half inches deep. That's like... Stop it. I can't say four and a half inches deep. This is a lot smaller than the light dome. <laughs> So that takes up a way smaller footprint than the previous light did. But you can see it makes a huge difference. You turn that off, you got nothing. And if I turn off the, the overhead light too, there is literally no light on me. The camera's like, oh, where are you? Where did you go? I can't focus. He's gone. He's gone. We have a light up top. It's one of those magnetic aperture tube lights. I think it's called the Infinibar. So both these lights can be matched to the same Kelvin. I wanna go 5,000 Kelvin or 3,400 Kelvin, warm it up, cool it down. Those are the options that I need. I don't necessarily need green or purple or pink or the, I don't need the whole spectrum. I just need warm or cool. And that gives me enough for a top-down angle. That gives me enough for the main angle. And that's all that I've needed. Why do you think it's called the Infinibar? Yeah, Infinity for sure, but like what, you can just like centipede that whole thing. Do you remember, what's that dirty movie called? I never saw that, did you? Have you watched Born Identity yet? Have you still not watched it? Can you tell me the actor that stars in the Born Identity? Mark Wahlberg, right? <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> it's a, no. How do you not know? Mark Wahlberg, I swear. It's not Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg would be the worst Born. He'd just be shouting at people in his Boston accent. That actually sounds so bad, it might be funny. Squirrel. So that is what we are doing for lights. And beyond that, it's just the ambient light of the studio itself. And that brings us to the cameras that are filming these angles. We went from C200s to C500s, but we're now using the R5C. It's small, we've got a little battery grip on it, sitting on a Sackler tripod. It's the greatest tripod of all time. It's what's called Flowtech. And it's lasted, again, the entire journey. The stuff that's, la this is all stuff that's lasted the whole journey. I'll link it all in the description. And then we've also got an R5 mounted for the top down with a 15 to 35 on both. That's 15 if we zoom all the way out so you can see all the BTS details, but we bring that in to crop out all the things. And then I would probably move this mic out of the way 
and that's perfect for unboxings like this little gem here i've i've gone so long without having a top down angle and they're just so unbelievably useful it's so nice to not just have to hold everything up to the camera I know top down is nothing new to anybody watching YouTube, but I would say it's one of those staple YouTube angles that people just want to see top down. Now this camera is HDMI minied into this little feel world monitor. Now this is this cheap little plastic. It was less than 200 bucks on Amazon, but I only needed something where I could just see what I was holding. So it's easy to navigate and get things to where they look good for you to be watching. So that's the bonus monitor. The main monitor that I'm using to, to see the whole this whole frame is a small HD 702. And these have been the cameras that have filmed every single video since since it released, since it came out, and it's been it's been fantastic. All right, let's talk audio. I don't always use the podcast arm. I like the podcast arm only because if I'm gonna make several videos at my desk, I feel like it just, it breaks it up. It's a bit different. So this is the Shure SM7B, the most popular prolific podcast mic probably to ever exist. That's on a Frameworks arm. I will say I've never liked any podcast arm that I've ever owned. They're always just flinging where I don't want them to fling. I have that going into a cloud lifter because these are naturally a little bit quieter. They record a little bit. We've got to do more in post. So that cloud lifter bumps it up natively so that we don't have to press it as far uh, after the fact. But our main mic is the Sennheiser MKH416. I don't even need this mic. We could just immediately push that out of the way because it's on an arm and I can talk with the boom mic no problem. So this is what you're used to for most videos, but you can get a bit of a difference of the audio quality if you can hear it. Uh, let me know what your preference is actually. Do you prefer a boom mic that you can't see like the Sennheiser or are you more of a sure SM7B kind of guy and you like the vibe of seeing it in frame? Not that I'm gonna change what I'm doing because I just told you why I do it, but I am interested. It's funny because it's true. I mean, I, I, want, I want to know, but I, I'm happy with, I'm happy with what I'm doing. You understand, they understand. I love you guys. Now all this audio runs into a mix pre, which is like a little interface that has a preamp inside it. It's got all the right XLR channels. It monitors the audio. Sometimes you don't have that control built into the camera that you're using or it's in the menus and it's really hard to monitor live. So this thing is a professional audio device that all of our audio has been plugged into for years now. Again, one of those things that uh, Marquez told me to get along with that boom mic that I have to this day used for every single video since the day he told me to get them. Thanks, Marquez. Another thing I've always tried to do is get as many tripods and light stands off the ground as possible. At the old studio, I had six outlets put into the ceiling. I had welded steel bars added to the ceiling so that I could clamp uh, the boom mic, the lights, all the cables, and then plug them in up top. So literally everything was plugged into the ceiling and nothing touched the ground. Uh, looking back, I probably should have done that here. I didn't. So we tried to build our own with those C stands, but it works great because it gets so much off the floor. Now, the single greatest accessory that's allowed me to do this with all of the peripherals is the Manfrotto friction arm, which with the camera plate on it. This thing, I have like five of them, and honestly, it's not enough. I, I have never owned too many of these. I have always found a use for them. They are so good. They can hold so much weight. I've got one holding the light. I've got one holding the monitor, one holding a camera, and it's no problem for it. It won't sag at all. I will leave links to all this stuff in the description below if you want to see them, if you want to find it. Uh, I'll, I'll try to Amazon link everything. Those are affiliate links, so full disclosure, if you do use those, it supports the channel. Thank you in advance, but just so you know. Some other little scummy details is like we have all of the peripherals under the table on an Apple box. If you don't have Apple boxes, they are infinitely infinite. They are infinitely useful for a myriad of things when it comes to filmmaking and just any kind of like studio needs. We've got like 10 of them, but we've got some gear sitting on one of those right now off camera that you can't see. But again, one of those things that over the seven years I've been doing this, you still have some of the items from the beginning. I feel like the items that have made it from the start are definitely items worth mentioning. And just about every single one of these are. There you have it. That is the entirety of the setup. And as you can see from those wide shots, it's very clean. Everything is on two stands. Thank you again to Canon for sponsoring this video. And if you want to see more of the behind the scenes of how we do things, hit me in the comments below. I'll be there. Thanks so much for watching. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already for more photography related content. Seven years into making videos and still it happens. This is the second time we're recording this because uh, yeah, the mics didn't work. I'm making a whole video about my setup and how it's streamlined.
<laughs> and the first version doesn't work because the audio is jacked. So uh, here we are, round two, take two of how I make videos in 2024. 